All right, so um, in response, I'm going to try to touch on two things. First, um, it's sort of a question and a concern, um, because it's a question that I think I already know the answer to, but I'm going to phrase it as a question, um, just in case my answer is wrong. Um, the question is, uh, are the Churchlands really trying to not only reduce phenomenological mental states of first-person experience to physical neural states are they not only trying to reduce them but also eliminate them um, which I think I know the answer to this question because you know the name of their project is eliminative materialism so it sort of implies that yes they're trying to eliminate consciousness as an actual um, thing in the world because it's not physical are they calling for a paradigm shift in the sense that consciousness goes away? Much like phlogiston and these, these kind of medieval ideas that we've moved past now that we understand the way um, the causality of reality works. Is that what they're saying? I think it is. And if it is... I mean, I would agree in the sense that a, a paradigm shift is required before we're going to solve the hard problem, which means that it's not even a problem in the sense that we're understanding it in the old paradigm, because to define a problem, you must also define a way that it could be solved. And we don't even know of an experiment which could detect consciousness. We can detect behaviors of both persons at the level of their bodies and persons at the level of their neurons but we can't actually detect experience but rather than think that the paradigm shift required to understand consciousness is going to reduce consciousness to nothing but a physical state I think the paradigm shift is going to require uh, changing our whole picture of what we thought a physical universe was because I don't think we're going to be able to not only reduce but eliminate our subjective experience of the world without a subject there is no object and I wrote you a, a private message about how I think um, the Churchlands as they go deeper and deeper into the actual neural physical structures of the brain they're going to find that instead of finding some stable interpretation or ground to base everything else humans think about they're going to see that their own neural states are plastic and that the brain is constantly rewiring itself and it rewires itself based on the, in the intentions of the phenomenal experience that is involved in that consciousness and so the brain is growing itself while it is thinking about the world thinking isn't this passive that just can observe the truth it's also involved in that activity of discovering the truth and it just seems like a strange paradox is being played out as human neuroscientists begin to explore the brain in such an abstract sense while at the same time desiring to intentionally alter you know the way that their own neurons are aware of the world that's what the paradigm shift is all about right it's convincing people that their first person experience is not what they thought it was it's something far more um, hidden and mysterious um, not the kind of mystery that we can't understand in a coherent way but the kind of mystery that exists now and has yet to be solved in a, an acceptable way um, so that's the first issue what is it exactly that the Churchlands are trying to eliminate if I'm wrong about my assumption uh, let me know because I think um, there are possibilities such as neurophenomenology, which try to integrate our understanding of the brain with our understanding of first-person experiences. How 
um, individuals develop psychologically over a lifetime, um, you know, in, in reference to how they report it and how it seems for human beings. Integrating all of that psychological knowledge with our knowledge of, of the brain. For instance, by hooking um, subjects up to an fMRI or a PET scanner and um, correlating their subjective reports with the objective brain data. And there's certainly a lot to be gained from that. Um, but to do that, we have to accept uh, that the subjective states are a reality and not just some epiphenomenal layer of um, existence that it's yet to be scrubbed away by science but rather it's an actual um, constitutive part of the cosmos the universe is something and someone at the same time it's an object and and a subject it's a what and a who if we accept that then we can do neurophenomenology if not then we have to eliminate consciousness I think anyways the second part of this video is um, about the idea of uh, that brain body world trinity which is basically along the same lines of what I was just saying but to give a more concrete example of this um, you said that you know the brain has to be where we assume the main computational activity takes place but um, there are a lot of uh, theorists. Uh, Andy Clark is probably the uh, the most preeminent of them. That um, they talk about something called extended cognition, which is the idea that uh, well, writing is the paradigm example. We're in the process of of writing something down. What we're actually doing is um, um, offloading a cognitive task onto a piece of paper in, in the form of um, language and um, in a sense this allows us uh, it's an augmentation of, of computation or, or of cognition and we can perform far more complicated mental tasks using pen and paper than we can just thinking with you know the neurons and Andy Clark w would suggest that uh, every every one of our activities in the world in a sense doesn't need to be computed by just what's in the skull up here some of it's out there for us and because we're structurally coupled with it we don't need to think about well, um, doing the appropriate thing our bodies do it for us because our bodies have evolved to live in this world um, and you know the bodies are also changing the world and so there's this this loopy um, connectedness between brain, body, and world, um, which makes it very difficult to locate, you know, the causal power uh, anywhere in particular. It's it's the whole thing working in concert. Consciousness, therefore, is a, an emergent property of three components, which uh, you can't understand separately because it's only together that they produce the phenomenon that you're really after.